because this is the thing you had to have in the past to get signal into an amplifier. And the LOC is called the line output converter. Now line output converters could be anything that changes the signal coming out of a radio. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, your adapter to give signal. It could be a, a uh, full-blown interface module. Full-blown interface. Some, it could be a simple. summing module. Yep. But what they do primarily is they drop the voltage because typically a car audio amplifier will only handle, you know, up to a two-volt signal, and at 25 watts, that's typically 10 volts. So we got to drop that voltage down. The other thing that happens is we know that the output of any radio, the speaker output, takes two wires. You have a plus and a minus, and like I say, those are only there for reference. There really is, you know, no always positive voltage, always negative. It changes back and forth, but that's just a reference so you can get correct polarity between left, right, and front and rear. But when you start looking at the, the output of that radio, that speaker wire, it cannot be shorted to chassis ground. So the speaker wire coming out of our head unit, we never want paired you to ground. You never want it shorted chassis ground. So if you take any speaker wire from any radio, whether it's factory or aftermarket, or out of any, you know, even aftermarket or factory amplifier shorted to ground, you're either going to damage the unit or it's going to go into protection. Yeah. The thing with the line output converter, they're going to drop the voltage. Now. What is that black box on top of that power supply called? What is this big box over here? This guy right here? It's called a what? Mm, should be an amplifier. An John. amplifier. What does an amplifier do? It amplifies. It makes it things amplifies louder. It increases signal. voltage of the, the signal you have coming in. Yep, because the radio isn't loud enough, so we need to amplify the voltage. Right. Well, the problem with the line output converter, as we can see by the, the PowerPoint, I mean, the first thing they do is they drop voltage because we said 25 watts is equivalent to 10 volts. Most amplifiers will only take a 2-volt input, so I can't run, even if I isolate the ground, I still can't run the signal into the, so I have to drop the voltage. So I started off with a 10 volt signal, I run it through a line output converter, I'm going to drop the voltage, what are we making that amplifier do? Work harder, right? Yeah, exactly. So we just got to amplify that signal even more, so we're going backwards. So to start off with one signal, we want to make it louder, but first thing we do is we drop it down, send it through an RCA cable, which is one of these, which is also tied to chassis ground, which what picks up engine noise. And then we amplify it even more, and we get more problems with so engine noise. So you knock the signal down just so you can boost it back up. Yeah, and of course you're going to add in that engine noise. Yeah, any and other noise that, that, that it happened well. to pick up in its in its path back to the amplifier. Exactly. So you said uh, voltage. Do we, should we measure some voltage here, John, or what? Yeah, why not? Proof is in the pudding. What? You Let's can talk all day. Let's do yeah, Rubber meets the road. Really Let's do is. this. All right. So go ahead and play, you're going to play a sine wave? Sure, I can play a sine wave for us. Now remember, when it comes to, you know, test tones, if you go into kicker.com onto our website, you go into the support tab, you can download test tones, you can download pink noise, which is correlated, which means it's mono pink noise, 20 to 20K frequency response. You can download 50 hertz, 1 kilohertz test tones at 0, minus 5, minus 10 dB, and we won't talk a whole lot about that until we really get into a, a tuning, you know, uh, show, but you've got different test tones you can download, plus the test tones for the key amplifier, the key LOC, and of course the 204, so all that's available online. Or if you get the Kicker U app, you can get test tones, frequency, you can get box you know, design, you get a lot of different things. But what we're going to do with this voltmeter right so now... So just so everybody uh, watching knows, we have the regular speaker wire outputs, positive and negative, yep. they're wired to our KISL, K-I-S-L, which is just RCAN. So even though it looks like an RCA, this is actually still speaker yeah, leads. Yeah, it's actually hardwired to the speaker outputs if you can see right. right and we're going to show you a picture of that a little bit more in detail. in detail so right now we are looking at just regular speaker wire out of this source unit um, and the volume's up all the way so what, what kind of voltage are we looking at there looks like 10.99 11 volts so we got 11 volts that means that radio is actually at four ohms it's doing a little bit over 25 watts yeah putting out so some juice that's but. the actual you know, speaker output now without touching the head unit whatsoever. Right. Let's measure the voltage out of the RCA output. Remember, it's going to be decreased in voltage and it's also going to be tied to chassis ground. So we had 11 and now we're at 5.12, so 5 so volts, half, literally little, less than half. Less than half the voltage. So we know right away by taking the speaker output, we're going to have twice the voltage going into the amplifier. The amplifier only has to amplify the signal half as much to get the same output. Right. Why don't we just go ahead and measure the output of the amplifier? Sure, let's Since do that the versus the two, here, right? Let's see what the difference looks like. And go ahead, let's turn it down a little bit. Let's not drive it into clipping. Let's just start at like 22 or 25. Okay. So now we're going to measure the output of the amplifier with the two different inputs to see where we're at. So I'm making Ken do all the work here. So it's okay, no problem. Let's get the probes back on there. If I didn't break my meter here, there we go. 
So let's set that meter up where they can see it and go ahead and set it to AC voltage. And once again, we're doing all these measurements with AC voltage with a test tone. And you can use paint noise, but it's not quite as consistent. So always use the test tone when measuring the voltage out. All right. So now we're going to pick go one to of our full range channels here because we are playing, right now I'm playing one kilohertz, but the same idea applies if you were using uh, the sub channel. Yep, so he's doing 1K output and we have got. Well, I'm at minimum gain here, so, so I'm turning that gain up. So the, the uh, KXA amplifiers actually have a clipping indication or a, a gain match feature built into it. So I know where to set the gain without having to bust out the, oscill the oscilloscope or Which anything. Which is like really that. nice. And what he's talking about, the gain control will actually illuminate at 1% clipping on the input. Right. So you can play a test tone, start turning the gain dial up until the control lights up red. When it does, that means you're at clipping. You back it off till the light shuts off. And our, you're right We're at on. clipping. Yep. What's the output? We're at 16.73 volts on the output of the amplifier. Okay. That's so, with speaker level in. Let's go ahead and switch it over to RCA input. Okay. I'll need those RCA's. You'll need an which RCA right cable. Yeah, let's do that. We got a couple. Take your pick here. <laughs> 16.75. Is that correct? 16.73. But yes. So. We have not touched the gain on the amplifier, and we have Just also not touched the output of the radio. Now, we look at the voltage. We're at zero. Did it quit playing? We're at zero. <laughs> oh, because we're not. Oh, cause you got to probe the amplifier. <laughs> I thought you were doing that part. No, nah, I'm, I'm clear over here. So now we're at seven volts. So That's literally. a lot less. We're at 15, what was it, 16 and 3 quarters? 16.75, yeah, yeah, roughly down to 7 volts. And that is So much not, less output to our speakers. Now, you know, mathematically, that looks like, you know, just, that's just about half the output, but it's actually quite a bit less because it's right. all logarithmic the way, you know, the, the formulas work. So, so what's though, that require in order to get back to rated power? What you've do we got to turn do? that amplifier up, don't you? That's so right. Gain's got to go up. So Turn and, that amplifier up till we get to 17. Keep it right up. Go back a little bit right there. So how far did you have to turn that gain up? Uh, another quarter turn, another roughly. Another quarter turn. So, but so now I've asked the amplifier to work even harder. So we're able to get the same power out of the amplifier because our amplifiers are cool like that. However, what are the downsides of that? I mean, I have higher gain. Does it really matter if I get the same power on the output? Well, the difference is going to be you now have the same power on the output, but you also have the added benefit of having engine noise. I don't like that. Nope, don't like don't that Don't like that at all. all. And if you had any distortion, you're going to amplify that distortion more as well. But the other thing I want to talk about, some line output converters, some of the more inexpensive line out converters, are just a series of resistors. So we've seen those in a really inexpensive line output converters. They're trying to drop that voltage, so they do it with resistors in a plastic box. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have seen these boxes melted. Take 100 sure. watts of power and put it in a plastic box, jam it under a dash in Oklahoma or Texas. That is a fire hazard. 100 watts is, total, not even yeah. per channel. Like 25, 30 watts per channel sometimes, and you'll melt them. Yep, it is a liability. So that is a cheap line output converter, but guess what? These head units, they've got a line output converter built into them now, right? Do they? They really do. <laughs> so if you guys notice now, almost every single head unit on the market has a heat sink. I mean, even look at this one right here. The, the case of this is a heat sink, and it's, it's warm. It's not hot right now, but it's warm. So what happens inside this unit, rather than having a true preamp, because true preamp is actually the best way to get signal into an amplifier, they don't have true preamps anymore, but they still have the RCA output. So inside all these aftermarket head units, they have a line output converter, which basically they're going to take the power that's coming out of that internal amplifier. They're going to bleed it off as heat. They're going to connect the signal to that center pin of the RCA, and they're going to tie the shield to the chassis ground. So they give you a low voltage output, so in case your head unit can't accept speaker level input, exactly. it doesn't fry your you know, input side of your amplifier. But the disadvantage of using the low level, of course, it's lower voltage, and it's tied to chassis ground, so you may have engine noise. So the LOCs also give you a speaker to RCA adapter. Physical conversion of the, yep. of the connection type. So, so instead of having bare wires, wires in, you've got the RCA. You've got the RCA coming out. So that's one advantage is they give you an easy way to connect. So they are essential to the connecting an amplifier to an OEM radio. In fact, some you know aftermarket radios don't have RCA outputs, the cheaper ones. But there is an issue. The first one is 
you have to buy these. Well, of course, LLC costs money, right? There is a cost involved in these, so you're spending money on something that is not going to help it sound any better, give you any more power or be clear. It's just merely... A, money down the toilet. Yep, what I call a Band-Aid. That's all it is, is just a Band-Aid to allow it to work. Something else that could be a fire hazard. We talked about the fact that if they're just resistors, they can get hot and melt. They are going to drop voltage, and that's kind of one of the things they're meant to do, but that's not a good thing, as we talked about. That's just one of those things that was inherent in the design of amplifiers. In the past, they would not take a high voltage, whereas all kicker amplifiers from 2010 will take at least 10 volts into the RCA input. Right. When you get into like the Key 501 and the CXA series, they'll take 40 volts, which is equivalent now, to 400 watts. That's right per in, channel. 400 per channel. watts per channel of RCA. Right. 400 watts. So the output of maybe a factory amplifier, even if it's a high end, you know, factory amplifier. Take I'd, those speaker leads, put some RCA tips on them right into our amplifier. Yep. And something else that is kind of a bad thing is they're going to degrade frequency response. Well, what, is, what does that mean, John? So we're going to show you that right now. We're going to play pink noise. Okay. And we're going to put that into each of these line output converters. And there's actually two kicker line output converters. And if you're wondering why we're talking so bad about line output converters, and we have two of our own, actually we have three if you count the key lock, which is the accurate True. piece, it makes a big difference. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run pink noise from our source into each of these line output converters, and we're going to measure the output, what it looks like. Get your uh, RTA, so, some software up. We're going to pull up something we call True RTA. Which one would you like to start with, John? So uh, let's start with the up. blue one on the end. And I'm going to shut this program on down. I'm going to start it back up again. I can't see what I'm doing. Hopefully I didn't break anything. All right. So we're taking the output from the head unit. I don't know I if you guys can see here. that. We're coming Just, right out. It's the rear channels of the head unit, the green and purple wires. So the rear channel outputs, regular speaker wire outputs of the head unit right into our LOC. So you can pretend that these were maybe factory speaker wires because you wanted yes. an LOC integration. Just high level in. Just a way to test it. So go right. ahead and play pink noise. We're playing. Now, let's go ahead and switch back to the laptop there, Ernie. Now, if you look at this frequency response, pull my little, see if I can get my mouse to pull up here. What is happening to the low end frequency response on this? So maybe even 300-ish, uh, 400 hertz, it starts to kind of roll off and yeah. it's no longer level with all the upper band frequencies. So for those that don't understand what you're looking at, bass frequencies are down at the left side of the screen and your, your treble or high frequency or tweeter frequencies are all the way on the right. Um, so you can see once you get into the mid bass and lower region, uh, you've lost some output, you've lost um, what do you got there? 30 lost, Quite a bit. maybe 6 dB by the time you get down to the end. 6 dB is four times. It's a lot of power. So you've lost a lot of bass yeah, response. Yeah, for sure. And that's merely by running the, the speaker level out of your factory radio into this line output converter. Right. Let's go ahead and try the one next to it. Okay, Let's so see if this one's brand X number two, maybe brand Y. Not changing anything, just, just swapping the signal over. Input over to that LOC and output. And while he's doing that, we've got about 15 minutes, guys, for the contest. So it's 8.15 right now. So, all right, Ernie, let's switch back to the laptop. Is this one any better in frequency response? Mm, not so I'd much. I'd say it actually probably is a little bit worse. Yeah, not so much. And in fact, we got less output. And for those that might think that these do have adjustment pots on them, they're all the way up. So that's, that's just the most we can get out of them. Yeah, that's, that's the that's, best they do, honestly. That's as loud as Best case get, scenario in there And that's them. the best frequency response you're getting. So by using these line output converters, you've killed the bass response. And what do we like here at Kicker? What, what kind of We're known for company? big bass, John. We're known for big bass. So once again, we want to find a way to make sure that you don't lose any bass. Right. So let's go to another line output converter. This is called the let's Kicker. Let's do it the Kicker way, right? Yep. Okay. This is the Kiss Lock. Ooh, and let's go back good, to the screen there, Ernie. Those are tight RCA cables. You yeah, guys haven't noticed are Q. Our, our Q series RCAs yeah. are extremely tight. They don't play. Now, let's look at that graph. Wow, as you see it slowly building back up. We have not lost any base response. And also, what else have you noticed about that graph? It's higher overall. It's got more voltage output, right, which is exactly. kind of the overall thing. We want as much voltage as possible. So while we have this hooked up, go ahead and switch that over to the second, which is the Kiss Lock, Kiss Lock two. 2, which is very unique. We'll talk about it in detail in just a second. All right, 25 engine wine. We see some comments up here. Kicker for the win, like that. And what do we have here? Same Once thing. Again, no loss in base response right. and more voltage. So flat on the frequency output. response. Um, you know, if you're using it for 
whether you're using it for subwoofers, mid-range speakers, whatever you might be putting on the other end of that LOC. You're not going to lose the base. Same signal process. in or same signal out as you had in. So, yep. So that's one of the you know advantages. If you have to use a line output converter, we're still going to pass that full frequency response at full power. Yeah, buy some quality stuff. Yep. Exactly.